look at forward and past observations and how to use that to drop duplicates observations in your data set. Now in finance and economics and business as well, we often use panel series information. And we usually take large data sets and put them together for analyses, either if it's for academic purposes or for professional purposes to manage a hedge fund or something, or to actually just use as an example for a project that you're working on in university or college. Now, what we often need to do with that is compare the current observation with a previous observation of that same, say, firm or product type and a previous point in time. And in order to do that, you need to use a couple of things. And Stata is particularly powerful in using these time series dimensions. So let's jump over to our Excel file. Here I've uploaded the Tesla stock information, and we're now going to do some analysis on that. So here you just have the data set so that you see how it works. We have a date variable, which is orders. We have an open price, high price, low price, close price, and an adjusted price, in addition to the volume of Tesla stocks traded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a time variable, which is equal to the row number. Usually you cannot do that. But in this case, I am sure that my data set is perfectly ordered. So now we have a time variable that we didn't have before. And we have the open and close price. So say that we want to calculate the return of the Tesla stock. Well, as you can see from period one to two, it's very, very, very positive. It gained about 20 to 21 euros in one day compared to 290 stock price. So it's like really, really good day but we want to calculate these returns. So how you do that? How can you go from one row to the other? Well, that's what this tutorial is about. So say we want to calculate the log return of Tesla. What you would have is you first of all, open up the log and then you basically calculate the ratio of these things. So you would have the log of the closing price divided by the closing price of the previous row. So every variable has an implicit loop in there. Every command that you use like this, because it does so for every row separately. So if you say generate me a variable that is twice the other variable, what it does is it goes through every row and multiplies that specific value by two. And you can access this command using the square brackets open and close. So what this effectively is, if you just use the close variable, what you're effectively doing is for this current row, give me some calculation and put it back in that current row. So what you're actually doing here is something that looks like this. Now for the current row of Tesla, loop over all of the rows and do something with that current row and the current row number minus one. For the sake of ease of programming, and it might actually give errors, let me remove this. But this allows you to go through the previous variable. And if you now press enter, and go back to your file, you see that we have calculated the return of about 7%. And in the first observation, there is a missing. This is because you cannot go one row back. We don't have the information of T is zero, only T is one. Therefore, we cannot do that calculation. And here you have the returns. Now you can do multiple things here. You can also do the uh, future return future return, for instance, which doesn't make any sense, but for the sake of argument, you can calculate that. So what you could do is you could just calculate that variable over the variable n plus one. And if you want to, you can also make it n plus four or n minus 27. It doesn't matter. So here you still get the returns, but you see that they're different. They're not the same because they look at one larger step ahead. 
And in the end, here you can calculate it for one and here for four periods because you have looked at these information points. So this allows you to go back and forward across information. And this tool allows you also to very effectively drop observations. So say that we uh, make the data set twice as large, just because we can. And we sort everything again on the period of time. Now you see that the data set is basically copied twice over. And you'd like to remove these duplicate observations in here. You can either use the predefined duplicate drop in Stata, which I think is a little bit scary and I don't completely trust the thing. But what you could also do is drop it manually. And you can use these underscore commands to do that. So drop if time is the same as time in the previous observation. And now we're back at the original data set. And you can use this for more than just one thing. You can do this for time, ISIN, and country, or something like that. You can use it over many different dimensions, however you'd like. So you can, get it, you can concatenate this with other things. Like ISIN is ISIN n minus 1. Uh, you can use many different combinations here. You can also use this to generate variables. So generate me the return if the time period now is equal to the time period in the previous thing plus one, for instance, or if, if, it, or if it is of the same firm. So you can calculate therefore stuff very efficiently using this way. Now, thank you so much for listening to this tutorial. I hope you found it insightful and that you'll now be able to go across rows in your Stata file. Thank you for listening and see you at the next one.